Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, it's our What's Bugging You show. <laughs> on today's show, we're going to talk about insects. Bugs. The bad bugs that eat your <laughs> ornamentals and your vegetables. We're also going to talk about peekaboo bugs. That's when you see the damage on the plant, but never the bug itself. We're also going to discuss insects that hide in plain sight. In our last segment, we're going to discuss dangerous insects. Insects that can carry disease and a new invader that threatens the whole Delaware Valley. So stay tuned and get bugged right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. The first person to survive Alzheimer's disease is out there. They might even be listening to this right now. Maybe they're waiting for the traffic light to change. Maybe they're daydreaming about a trip they've planned with their family. Maybe they're in a toddler seat, strapped in and wondering if they're almost home. That first survivor is out there and they're going to hold on to everything the disease steals away. And the Alzheimer's Association is going to make it happen by funding research, advancing public policy, and spurring scientific breakthroughs. And by providing local support right now to those living with the disease and their caregivers, we're easing the burden for all those facing it until we accomplish our goal. Alzheimer's disease has devastated millions of lives, but that's all going to change when we reach the first survivor. But we won't get there without you. Visit alz.org to join the fight. We are back, Len, and you know, an insect's table manners will tip off your control, huh? Yep, that's <laughs> all in the way that they feed. Because yeah. sometimes, if you're spraying an insecticide that doesn't work in a certain way, you're never going to control it. Mm-hmm. So, three different types. Uh, chewing mouth parts, like you're familiar with that. That's oh, yes. going to be, oh gosh, uh, grasshoppers and beetles and, mm-hmm. and caterpillars, like the stuff that actually you see where a lot of times it will make the, only the veins of the leaf will be left. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, eats the, it eats everything. Everything completely. Yeah. Now those, they're actually easy to kill. They're not yeah. not that big a hard. deal. And, okay. and often that you do see them, mm-hmm. um, they're not hard to find. That's good. But then there's rasping 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 mm-hmm. rasping mouth parts and it, and it kind of like it scrapes it scrapes it wow. yeah it's really <laughs> weird because it, it's what it does is scrapes the surface of wow. what it's chewing on whether leaf or stem or or what have you and it eats the ooze that comes out oh out of it Ooh. yep so uh, again that's going to be um i'm pretty sure like for instance uh like all of your uh, snails and slugs that they have right. rasping, rasping mouth parts. Mm-hmm. Thrips, uh, mites. Um, that's different. A little different. Uh, yeah. Um, that uh, sucking and piercing mouth parts. Okay. Now that's the one that they're the ones that are tricky because a lot uh-huh. of times they're real small. Tiny, you can't see right, and and the damage that it does, you don't mm. see like a missing part of the plant. It's like mm. the plant looks yellow. So sometimes you can think. Gosh, we just need to feed it more. Mm. We just need to feed it more. And there you're throwing fertilizer right. on it, trying to get it to grow. They're, under, they're mostly underneath the, the plant or on the – Are they? Or they, can, or they can be on the actual uh, – They stand. can be anywhere. Anywhere. They can be anywhere. They they're can be so anywhere. Tiny. Um, chinch bugs are the first thing that come to mind for me, and that's oh. an insect that's in the lawn mm-hmm. and where it goes and it attacks the grass and mm-hmm. it just sucks on the leaf and makes it that, you know, that – Yellow Yellowish. color. No matter how much fertilizer, you can't get it 
to yeah. green up. Yeah. Um, lace bugs come to mind. Uh, that might be rasping, rasping or sucking because mm -hmm. those are azaleas. Have you ever had an azalea or seen an azalea or had a customer come in with an azalea mm -hmm. or um, another type of broad, broad leafed evergreen where it just is yellow? Yellow, yes. They say they feed it. They say they've done everything mm -hmm. to it. That, a lot of times, is lace bug. Mm -hmm. And if you look really close to the leaf, mm -hmm. there's almost like, it's like tiny little spots oh. all over the leaf. And again, they feed. That's how a, a lace they bug do. will feed. feed on there. And it's not, you know, it tricks you thinking that it, it's an environmental problem mm -hmm. or it's another thing. And when you're trying uh, to identify damage, you, you basically, it's two things. It's either environmental or it's an insect. Mm -hmm. Environmental problems are lack of water, no fertilizer, mm -hmm. um, being sprayed Protein. by mistake with an insecticide. Mm -hmm. yeah, how many times have we seen that? Oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my husband came in and he went and he he went and he sprayed, sprayed all my roses. But he used weed killer. Oh my. Yeah, we've had that yeah. before. Few times. Yeah, but that's an environmental issue. Yes. So something to do with the environment. It's not an insect. Right. But Things when a lot of the sucking mouthing mouth parts, those will mimic environmental problems. Oh, so it's not easy to see what your uh, needs sometimes. Is that what you're saying? Well, it, it's you. You've got to know. Um, you know, when you have an issue, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is don't bring the dead part in. Like for us at Bloomers, we want people to bring in a sample of the problem where it's on the turn where it's going from good to bad mm -hmm. don't bring me the dead part yeah. the dead part that insect's done. gone there's nothing there to eat anymore <laughs> right. uh, it's late. done its damage it, 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 it's moved on mm -hmm. yeah, right. it's moved on but uh, again it, it's it's a lot of those uh, those first ones that we talked about where they're eating the the whole leaf, leaf yeah you know, they eat quick too. Quickly, you yeah. go out one morning and all of a sudden, it's, it's, all you have left a is a skeleton. <laughs> no. Japanese beetles oh. any day are going to be moving into the neighborhood. Soon. They are. Yeah. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Be ready. <laughs> so with those, they're going to just go and, and feed and mm -hmm. and they swarm. And one thing to consider is, is that when you spray certain things, that right. you've got to get generational. Mm -hmm. um, Japanese beetles are grubs in the soil. Right. Okay. So when you say put grub control down, yeah. yes. you're putting grub control down and you're really eliminating two problems. You're eliminating the grubs that are feeding on the roots of your lawn, but you're also eliminating the Japanese beetles that pop up. out of the ground yes. as adults. So that's important to do, lawn people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so everybody who's taking care of their own lawn or those that uh, are not, make sure that you're getting uh, some type right. of grub control down mm -hmm. um, just simply because it will control, control that. that two insects. Mm -hmm. Two for one. Two for one, yes. Two for one. Important. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, have, have you noticed, have you had an insect problem that you couldn't figure out? No, I, my, my plants. you're a smarty. No, pants. it's because my plants are healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That'll I don't have any problems at my house. Yeah. I I mean, I've had issues where um, right now uh -huh. at Bloomers, we have a plant where it's it's growing and that you can tell that it's being, um, it is being eaten mm -hmm. and that there are holes in it. Anything that's oh, the gonna, hibiscus, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Anything that's eating yeah. that way, that's, that's yes. ingesting large portions of the plant. Mm -hmm. It's easy to control. You spray it down, mm -hmm. and and then the control works that way. Orga organic, inorganic. Does, we're not. Doesn't we're going to be going there right yes. now. Um, things that are uh, like rasping type, where there's mm -hmm. systemics work better on anything that's mm -hmm. sucking, like or rasping, because what it's doing, it's eating the plant's juices. Mm -hmm. Now there may be damage on the plant. Mm -hmm but it's eating the plant juices. Mm -hmm. So you need to get something that's going to be controlling that. A contact spray mm -hmm. can work, but a systemic is going to work better. better. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, sus systemics, one, work a little slower. Mm -hmm. Two, systemics require the insect to actually feed on the plant. Right. So there may be a little bit of, of damage. Not, not particularly you'll notice, but there may be a little bit of damage. Mm -hmm. um, so now, now, Len, on the sucking on the sucking insects, uh, mm -hmm. they take their time to get that uh, going, and yeah. And by the time you look at that plant, 
and uh, the leaves are starting to turn. Right. Is it too late or do can you still use? No, no, okay. not at all. Okay. Because what it's doing, they're, they're they're taking the chlorophyll out and they're they're eating. Okay. They're, they're they're just putting the the plant under duress. But one other thing mm -hmm. is that those uh, sucking or piercing mouth parts mm -hmm. are spreading disease. Oh. So, like a lot of them, for instance, like um, mm -hmm. stink bugs, right? They do that where they are a a, a type of sucking sucking insect okay right. uh they and aphids same thing leaf hoppers uh -oh. leaf hoppers you know are just uh. because they can go from you know your neighbor's yard mm. where everything is just a mess and mm. that there's disease yes. over there and all of a sudden uh. they come and they're spreading it over into your yard so adding, not to mention yeah. some things like mosaic virus mm -hmm. is spread by insects and that right. mosaic virus is deadly to roses and there is no real cure for mosaic virus. Wow. So those viruses wow. are spread by those mouth parts that are in that type of insect. So you can have two things at once. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, mm. it's, you know, it's a goner. Yeah. It's a goner. It's tough. Um, you can tell in a rose where it just gets that mottled growth. Yes. It's really stunted. It looks like kind of a witch's broom witch's, almost. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's bad news. Yeah. It's bad news. And it happens in a lot of different insects, uh, a lot of different roses. Yes. Um, white so flies. You, you talked about white, white flies. flies. <laughs> uh, boy, another one. And they're, and you'll see that um, they're often attracted to yellow. So yeah. as the plants themselves get chlorotic and turn yellow, right. the insects are attracted to that. That. And that when a plant is under duress, it's more subs uh, it is, it's going to get a disease and uh, it has all kinds of problems that grow into it. Mm. So yep. it keeps them not only not by being eaten, mm -hmm. but it also <clears throat> will keep them healthy by not getting the disease spread. Right. So be vigilant out there when you're going outside. Right. No, right. And, and, and understanding how it's feeding right. is, it's is like the most important yes. clue that you can give, like, again, go to your local garden center, right. bring a piece that's on the turn, mm -hmm. and tell us what's happening, and we'll be able to sure. we'll be able to know. Oh, yes. We'll be able to know how to that's diagnose great. it and give you the right control product. And you remember how we work it. Mm -hmm. We choose an organic product first, but if an organic pro Doesn't product work. is not going to be effective, mm -hmm. there we'll go to a— Next step. Uh, the next step, which yep. is an inorganic. Inorganic, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, great. Coming up next. All right. Right. We've got an, another section about bugs mm -hmm. and those kinds of insects that uh, you need to get right away. Yes. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Are deer and rabbits eating your prized vegetables and flowers? These animals can destroy a season's worth of hard work in one night. Bonod has the answer. All-natural go-away deer and rabbit repellent can help save your flowers, vegetables, shrubs, and trees, including fruit trees, from these nuisance pests. All-natural go-away can be applied directly to plants you want to protect and keeps animals from eating them for up to 45 days. Go-away liquid can be applied directly to vegetables and fruit for protection up to the day you want to harvest them. Go-away also comes in a granule that lets you create a barrier around your garden and protects your landscape plants for up to two months. Bonide products are family made in America. Bonide's go away repellents are available at these fine retailers. Animals and Gardens Unlimited, New Egypt, New Jersey. Berlin Agway, Berlin, New Jersey. Spots Hardware, Medford, New Jersey. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Spring has sprung and it's time to visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bring us a soil sample and we'll test your soil's pH free. Heck, bring us a water sample from your pond too and we'll test that for ammonia and other critical levels. Did you know that Bloomer's has a pond department? We have all of the water treatments, fish and plants to keep your pond looking glorious year round. Are you looking for that four-step lawn program? Bloomer's carries Scott's, Jonathan Green, Bonide and Espoma's organic step program. 
Need to seed? Bloomers has its own blend of seed called Township Turf. It's just the right balance of rye, fescue, and bluegrass to give you a spectacular lawn. It's also perfect for repairing bare spots and matches extraordinarily well to sodded lawns. Don't forget the garden. Bloomers carries bumper crop soil amendment and all the fertilizers a garden could need. Both organic and inorganic. The best vegetables start as seedlings from Bloomers. Come visit those who know the friendly folks at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey, just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. For directions and information, visit www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, don't wait too long to spray. Oh, no. You know, it, and here's a couple. We're only going right. to talk about two insects that are often confused. Sure. Okay, bagworms. Bagworms, yes. Bagworms yeah. and tent caterpillars. Right. Now, they all come out right around June, and bagworms are those things that go on, a lot of times you'll see them on evergreens, evergreens yes. and they look like cones. Cones, yes. <laughs> Every you time, you, you know it's bagworm season. <laughs> right. uh, uh, actually, we you know the customer missed oh. bagworm season when they went and <laughs> come in and they say, "My, I've got cones all over. Oh, yeah. Now, the problem that happens is that that cone is a cocoon and that, that insect has made its home. It's pretty much done feeding. It's over. It's over. Done. It's over. And what's happening is you're going to get adults out of there um, that are going to get out and breed. Oh, terrible. Now, the adults right now are, I guess it's the juveniles that are starting to hatch. Okay. The adults have laid their eggs. And right now is when they're starting to make their own little cocoons. Now, I have a video. If anybody would like to see it, please contact us on the hotline. hotline. All right. That's 609-685-1880. I will send you a copy of the video. I caught a a bagworm that was in mid, uh, it was basically at the point where it was collecting and where the end of the worm was sticking out, where it was still, it it was almost like a, a snail. Oh, where wow. it had on the back of it, it had its little bag that it was forming, uh-huh. and it was, but it was still eating the plant, oh. and it was still collecting and building that bag for it to to go in. Uh, wow! Yeah, Good yeah! <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, Ooh. you don't need horror movies. No, you don't. Just, you just to, get, <laughs> get close. A web page. But the the thing is, is if you spray now, mm-hmm. you will get control on bagworms. Right. If you Perfect. wait. Till there are those cones on your plant, you might not have. You can't. Anything. You have to physically right. take them off, step on them, scrunch them. Uh, you know, do. You know, phew. honestly, yeah. taking them off and stepping on them oh. is the best way. Yes. If you take them off and they're dried, that yeah. insect has already hatched as Done an adult thing. and it's doing its thing and right. it's breeding uh, somewhere else and it might be, might be in your yard, it might not. But uh, if it's dry, it's crunchy. Right. Where when you step on it, and you don't, you can feel that it's it's sure. a pouch. Oh yeah, it's, it's a little pouch. pouch. Yeah. Um, and that's but that's gonna be a couple months <laughs> from now. From, yeah. Not now. Yeah. Not now. Right now is when, when you can get it. active right. control mm-hmm. for bagworm. Now, Good. people come in mm-hmm. and they get bagworm and tent caterpillar confused. And it's wow. just semantics. It's just the way they, des- they describe it. Okay. Now, what is a tent caterpillar, Julio? I seen them on, on the uh, leaves. They're, they're like, but they're like big. They're bigger, and they have. That's uh, right. A, they have like a. Um, it's like a tent. Like it says, a tent. It's right. Like a web. Web. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and and it's a, a giant web, and it's filled. It's filled with the. Uh, filled. With, I mean, it's uh, gross. There. I mean, there's. Tons of it seems people. like thousands mm-hmm. in there. Devastate. <laughs> if you go to spray those, mm-hmm. they're protected because it repels that they're water. Uh, that tent, you know, when it rains real hard, they're not getting wet. Oh. So, but they're feeding mm-hmm. on your plant and they wow. are voracious feeders. Ooh. I mean, oh. 
One wow. day there's foliage, and the next day there's not. Nothing. Wow. <laughs> so Be careful. they are different. <laughs> Tent caterpillars are different than bagworms. So let's go back to bagworms. Bagworms okay. are the, the insect where it goes and it makes its own little cocoon that it carries around, and eventually it will attach itself to your plant, mm-hmm. and it will make it so that it looks like cones. Mm-hmm. Now is the time to spray to control for bagworms. Right. Okay. What are our choices, William? What are our choices to, to, to spray for bagworms? We have quite a few here. We have uh, eight. Okay. Uh, it's a garden. Uh, it's a home ready to use. Okay. Spray. Okay. And eight. It, it also comes in a concentrate. Concentrate. And, and yes. It, and it's uh it, it's bonide, bonide control. Yeah. All these are bonide All control bonide, products. Yes. That, um, yeah. If you notice, we favor uh, bonide, bonide at bloomers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just what we do. There there are other controls available. You know, your, your local garden center may may like, but if you come to bloomers, we know they work. Yes. We know they work. Um, because eight, we use them. <laughs> and you know what the story is with eight. Mm-hmm. You know why? Do you remember seven, right? Seven, yes, of course. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. eight is one better than one seven. One better than seven. Ba doom boom. Boom. Yeah, that's a horticulture joke. <laughs> there you go. Uh, they're not oh, funny. No, that's no, why they no. deal with plants. <laughs> um, all right. So, and then also Rose Shield, oh, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Rose Shield uh, is one of my favorite products. Um, right. Rose Shield is also a disease control. Yes. Um, excellent. <laughs> Excellent, Excellent insect control. Mm-hmm. Both eight and rose shield are not organic. Mm-hmm. Okay, just they're inorganic, just to let you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they work very very well. Um, oh, yes. I think rose shield is is my favorite, relatively new product. I don't know, yeah. a few years old. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it's an excellent product. What excellent do you like product. about it? Um, the fact that it has new chemistry. Oh, I see. And that where some of the insect controls that have been around for a long time, mm-hmm. like like here's an old one, malathion. Okay. Malathion works. Right. But it smells. Okay. Um, but okay. it's also been around. I mean, sometimes they just get new, like for instance, diseases become resistant to certain things. Right, things. Where this rose shield is okay. the closest to going back when they used to have like a combo rose spray, uh-huh. um, except for the, the drench, which drenches contain imidacloprid right okay we're not mm-hmm. going to go there for no. the moment no. but the fact that the rose shield is just a, a very very good product it is. the active ingredients are so hard to say that i'm not even going to try <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but is that there's yeah. lambda, lambda is in here that that lambda is is an excellent uh insect control um but again insect and disease, and disease both on one plant, yeah. we'll, on one product, and we'll yeah. control bagworm. Yeah. Systemic, uh, yep. Yeah. Right. Um, rose three and one. Yes. Yeah, right? Rose three and one. Ro- that is organic. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what's in rose three and one? Um, suppose, N- uh, neem oil. Neem oil. Okay. Right? It's yeah. Neem oil. It's all over. Yeah. yeah. It is. How many <laughs> ways? Uh, Captain Jack's. Captain Jack's. Great Probably product. the broadest spectrum. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right? Organic. Right. Organic, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the sim- systemic insect control, uh, not organic. Not not an organic product, but it it's it's the old um, uh, product that will that will work and, and it makes the plant poisonous to the insects. I like systemics right. just simply because they have a long a longevity to mm-hmm. them. Right. Important mm-hmm. bagworms as, Bag are, are, are easy to get rid of as long as you spray them at the right time, which right. is right now. Mm-hmm. Right now. right now. Don't spray them once the bags are there. Right. Once you see the bags on the tree, you need to literally physically mm-hmm. remove them. Um, on the farm, we used to have to pick <laughs> off insects oh. and drop them in a coffee can. Do they still oh. have coffee cans? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, those of you that know, a uh, coffee can that was filled with kerosene. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it was just what we did. I oh, mean, boy. you know, those back in the day. Right. But you have to physically remove them that same way where you oh, have yeah. to pick them off. Right. Pick them off. Uh, tent caterpillars, as soon as you spot them, spray them. Spray. They're easy to mm-hmm. kill. Almost every, anything will kill the tent caterpillar mm-hmm. as long as you can get to it. Mm-hmm. If they've already made their tent, mm-hmm. you have to take a stick, you shove the, the stick in there oh, in that <laughs> web, in the middle of the web, and you twirl it like it's cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> you have to break it, and yeah. then you spray it, and then you'll get the control. Wow. Because if you're trying to force... Uh, uh, insect control into that web, you're not going to get it. Wow. You're just not going to get it. 
It's not going to work. Hmm. Not going to work. So do the cotton candy trick, spin it around, anything that controls caterpillars, Mm -hmm. and almost everything does, and you're going to use a spray. Wow. And spray on the ground all over, and it will control them, mm-hmm. and it will get rid of them. And that's that's right. what you you'll protect your plants. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you'll see them along the highways and along uh, different parts of mm-hmm. rural areas where they're in the trees, and mm-hmm. and that wow. you know they well, they just are prolific. And a lot of times, insects where there's a lot of them, that they're easy to kill because their benefit for them is the uh-huh. fact that they can breed so much, wow. and that it's in numbers that they compete. Oof. On against ornamentals. Oh, goodness. So again, you got to do the cotton candy trick. Cotton, I like that cotton candy. Yeah, <laughs> got to break that web in order for it to there work. You go, folks. <laughs> you heard it. it here first. That's right. That's right. Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> All right. Well, in the next segment coming up, we're going to be talking about insects. Oh wow! That you never see. Oh boy! But you can see the damage. Oh. Uh-huh. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned for the Bloomers Garden Minute. The Garden Minute is brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Philadelphia Garden Radio. Find us on the radio dial or on the web at bloomers.com. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden with the Garden Minute. Wow, what a great time to be a gardener. You can plant anything right now. Vegetables, flowers, roses, trees, shrubs, and perennials. The possibilities are endless. No matter what you plant, you need to do these three things to ensure success. One, make sure you're adding soil amendment when you're planting. Bumper crop is our top choice, but even if it's just cow manure or peat moss, you only get one shot at improving the soil right at the root of your plants, so don't pass it up. Two, after planting, apply a granular type fertilizer made specifically for your type of plant. Evergreens, flowers, and vegetables all have specific dietary needs. Don't worry, if you're not sure what to get, your local garden center will help you match the right fertilizer to the right plant. A granular fertilizer will give your new plants a consistent feeding of nutrients. Think of it as three square meals for your plants that you reapply once every four to six weeks. Three, use a water-soluble fertilizer every two weeks. That's the kind you water your plants with. You know the stuff, the kind that tints your water blue. I recommend Jack's Classic, but others are available. Miracle Grow just came out with an organic water soluble fertilizer. When using water soluble fertilizers, they are immediately available to your plants. Think of it as those vitamins you take. It's an extra boost supplementing a regular diet. And for heaven's sake, buy one of those feeders so all you have to do is attach it to your garden hose and go. No mixing, no blue fingers. But remember, those feeders are only calibrated for water soluble fertilizer. They are not calibrated to spray insects or disease control. This is Len Schroeder for the Garden Minute, and we'll see you in the garden. Today's Garden Minute was brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Also brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome people. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilone peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilone succulent potting mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are back in the garden, and, you know, I see these holes, but I've never seen the insect land. Yeah. I, we've got that. We were talking a little bit about it before. How yeah. like we have some planted hardy hibiscus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's lots of holes. <laughs> but there's, uh, you never see the insect. I know. And that's because there's a large number of insects that actually feed at night. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like 
first thing, everybody knows crickets come out at night. Yeah. You know, I hear them. They're yeah. all, you know, you know why hit crickets make that noise? And not, not Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. Now, Jiminy Cricket's separate. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> uh, he's separate. Yeah. But, uh, like, real crickets, they're, make, they're looking for a mate. Do you know? It's like, <laughs> wow, they're making that noise. Like, hey, that. come, over, come here. over here. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, boy. You know, we'll go into that yet. <laughs> yeah, mail order bride. Here there we you are. Go. Come on. Come and get me. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, that. Uh, but at night, that things like taxis weevils. Mm-hmm. Um, taxis weevils are one of those things where it takes notches. Like if you ever have a rhododendron. Do you have any rhododendrons or have you had rhododendrons? Have, yes, I have. Mm-hmm. You ever notice on a rhododendron leaf, and it's that big leaf. It's it's a oh, yeah. big, you know, pretty big leaf big anyway. Yeah. But it has notches out of it. Right. Out of the side. Did That's did tax, did Texas weevils. weevils. Huh. And that they'll come out at night. They'll feed right. at night. Uh. And you'll think, it's like, what the heck is going on? Did we yeah. have hail? You know, is there, <laughs> what, what happened? I know. It's like, what? So Texas weevils mm. will do that. Wow. Um, slugs, slugs, snails, yeah, snails. Yeah, we have one here. You know, generally, <laughs> yeah, I found a snail that was in the bottom of a pot, and oh, I gave that. it to Julio here yeah. in the studio. There yeah, you go. There you go. Yeah, and, right here. And see that he was hiding. Yes, he was. Right. He, he wasn't in plain see. sight. No, he wasn't. And that the thing is that they will go and feed at right. night, mm-hmm. and they have that rasping mouth mm-hmm. parts. Right. Right. But they have to crawl, crawl. away during the day. Have they have that point. body where it'll dry out in the sun, mm-hmm. and yeah. so. Again, it's they're gone. Where are they? Where's a snail? I never yeah. see any snails. Yeah. But then you look on the ground, mm-hmm. and if you notice ever that there's that trail of, say, it looks like, um, you ever like notice gas has a iridescent look to it? If yeah. it's if yeah. once oh, it yeah. dries or oil, or, oil. Yep. you know, it's that oil slick look. Yeah. Snails and slugs leave a a oh, slime trail. trail. Mm. And that, that's how you'll tell. And it'll be on your pavement or on your sidewalk right, where yeah. it'll look like something sticky something or something there. like, <laughs> it's like, what the heck is that? Yeah. You know, does somebody yeah. spill ice cream? I, you know, it, and that, that's, con- that's a sign yeah. that you've got slugs or snails. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tell you what, it's thrips. thrips. Oh, oh, I hate thrips. Yeah. Oh. I hate thrips because they get into a flower, yeah. usually roses. They get into that base of the flower. Mm-hmm. And they just feed on that base of that okay. flower, and they make they make the flowers brown and yeah. ugly. Yeah. It almost looks like that they're yeah. that it's a disease, but it's not. Yeah. It's not yeah. a disease. It's, the insect is is trying to to basically mock what a disease looks like. Oh, so again, it's it's That's you don't true. see them. Mm-hmm. A lot of times that um, when you have insects that are like that, that feed like especially thrips. You've got to you've got to find out what it is, and it, insecticide choices kill in, in different ways. One, it's a contact where it it will poison the insect. One, it will smother the insect like a horticultural oil. If you got to spray it on and you got to hit it, um, like diatomaceous earth, mm-hmm, right. like that's Lust. like tiny. You know, picture like a bunch of. Uh, somebody a knife wielding wheel. blades just stabbing Cutting. into and into uh, an insect <laughs> right. and, and oh. those small particles of the diatomaceous earth are what it actually kind of slices Slice up their soft up. bodies wow. kind of nasty when you it think is. about it yeah um, and then there's a systemic where the, it poison makes the plant poisonous to the insect oh, works kind of like an, an antibiotic where course. it protects the plant mm-hmm. um, to me, that they're the most efficient. Right. They last the longest. Yep. They yep. they also will control the widest spectrum. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as I know, there are no organic systemic no, there aren't any. insecticides. Um, yep. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Some mm-hmm. organics say they have some systemic action, but yeah, no. yeah, no. doesn't work. Not effectively. Yep. Not not like an inorganic no. would. Um, mm-hmm. Again, it's mm-hmm. when when you get to the point where you know you, a lot of times where people yeah. will try a spray, sure. and you have generational insects, right? Yeah. Where you've got to kill the year. parents, you have mm-hmm. to kill the eggs, you have to kill the the juveniles, right. and what'll happen? You'll spray it once. Oh, I got them, and then what happens? The eggs hatch, oh. and they go and feed Mine all again. over your plant again. Yeah. On a systemic, it would control those everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's wonderful. But uh, again. 
mechanical insects like diatomaceous earth, like you always think that maybe they just get sprinkled on the ground, but you can make a spray out of them, by the way. With water, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And Wonderful. that they'll work, they'll work they'll on work. mites and they'll work on, uh, they're the best thing. If people have like house plants uh-huh. and they have those little fungus gnats that are flying oh, yeah. all around your plant, yeah. use that. Ooh. That'll work. There you go. That'll work. So a there's one. a lot of choices out there. But there is a lot. If, if you're seeing damage mm-hmm. and you don't see it at, at and you don't see the insect, that's another clue, mm-hmm. right? Mouth mm-hmm. parts we were talking about. Yeah. We are talking about all Chewing. these clues to, mm-hmm. to help diagnose what's going what's on. Going on yeah. So, again, look. You can actually go out with a flashlight and you'll actually <laughs> see them. You wow. will. Yeah. You will. I mean, weevils are funky looking Ooh. insects. but I don't uh, want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh. I don't do that at night. <laughs> if there are any Star Trek fans oh there, and I don't know if you remember the Star Trek <laughs> movie where they put that insect in uh-huh. Chekhov's ear. Right. That's what they look like. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, all right, we're getting be? off the track. Yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> in our next segment coming up, oh, we're going to talk about insects Ooh. that look like something else. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. Introducing miracle Grow's next big thing, Performance Organics. Finally, organics that work. Tested and refined by plant scientists for twice the results. Guaranteed. Don't grow a snack. Grow a feast. Don't grow a flower. Grow a million-dollar view. This new organic collection of soil and plant food is what you've always wanted. No compromise, just results. Guaranteed. miracle Grow Performance Organics. Are you concerned about mosquitoes ruining your barbecue? How about those mosquitoes that you've been hearing about in the news, which are spreading that Zika and West Nile virus? Let Bonide help you take care of this problem with some easy-to-use mosquito beater products. Mosquitoes love wet, damp areas, standing or slow-moving water. If this describes your property, you need to use Bonide's mosquito beater water-soluble pouches. They will kill the mosquitoes' larvae before they turn into flying, biting adult mosquitoes. If you have biting mosquitoes in your yard, use Mosquito Beater ready to spray. Just attach the sprayer to your hose and spray your lawn, shrubs, and trees. Do you want to create a fog that will get under your deck, around wood piles, or around your shrubbery? Use Bonide's Mosquito Beater Fogger with our fogging liquids. Bonide also offers natural mosquito beater repellents, which are available in easy-to-use granules or in a ready-to-use hose end applicator. Bonide products are family made in America. Find Bonide Mosquito Beater products at these fine stores. Aiken Back Garden Center, Pottstown, PA. Westchester Agway, Westchester, PA. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. They sure do. Julio and I are talking about the next insect that we're going to talk about. It, you, you can be looking right at it and not even not, not even, even know. know. Yeah. Not even know. And that's scale. Yeah, yeah. Scale is an insect that it's like the barnacle of the plant world. Oh, boy. When they're juveniles, they have legs. And when they're adults, <laughs> they just kind of sucker on to right. one spot. Right. And, like, Stay it there. looks just like a it's, – it's just a bump. <laughs> it's bump. just a bump on some, mm-hmm. on some. Um, they also will give off honeydew. Okay. Honeydew is uh, the, basically it's insect poop. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But certain insects like euonymus and mm-hmm. not necessarily cork bark euonymus right. uh, like burning bush. Burning bushes. But the other mm-hmm. euonymus that are the golden euonymus, golden euonymus that, yeah. yeah, those types of, of right. euonymus that have the bright contrasting mm-hmm. leaves and, right. and that 
that yeah, euonymus the right. gets euonymus scale. Oh boy! And almost every time we sell them, I want to just here take this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what <laughs> you know, it is. You're, right you're going to get it. Right. It's almost guaranteed. <laughs> okay. It's easy to control, sure. but you just need to do it. Right. And that people will look at it and it'll look like their stems are covered in white fuzz. Oh boy! <laughs> no, it's, but it's easy to control. Uh-huh. You can use um, an organic, uh, for instance, the all seasons horticultural oil. Right, spray it on there. Right. Smothers over top of them, that's easy. and that's the one thing about scale. They're not running around. Oh, well, that's good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so again, yeah, they're not. They're uh, not running around. They stay there. <laughs> yep. for quite a while. Yep, and but uh, what happens with scale is that uh, they are those sucking mouth parts uh-huh. where they're anchoring into that plant Boy. onto stems most mm-hmm. of the time, sometimes leaves. But it it is turning the plants yellow, and uh, and basically they can spread disease as well. Mm-hmm. But it's the honeydew. I go back to the honeydew. Honeydew, honeydew is attracts other insects Underwind. because they feed on it. Wow! People will come in and they'll say, "I have ants all over Never. my plant," mm-hmm. and the bottom uh, my the plant's leaves are turning like. Black. They're like this black uh, sooty, goodness. and I was like, "Oh, that's mo- that's some type of sooty mold, or it's an in- it's a disease, disease problem." And yeah. it's not. Okay. And what it is, it, it's the poop wow. from the insects that are usually scale ah, that are that. on them, wow. and that we're going to talk about another uh, plant in our next or another insect in our, our next segment, which mm-hmm. is the right. the spotter and lantern fly. Oh boy, that it is mm-hmm. so bad with honeydew. That it is destroying the finishes on cars. It is Everything. just, it's it's awful. It's Decks all, all and over. furniture oh. and, and things. Uh, wow. But we'll talk about that in our next segment. Yeah. So with scale, mm-hmm. what it's doing, is it's anchoring onto your plant, and you, you're looking in that you really can't tell yeah. that an insect's there. You, you think it's just part of the bark. Yeah. And if you go through and you can scrape it off, then you know it's a soft-bodied yeah. insect where you know sometimes it has a little bit of a shell to it, right. but uh, that scale needs mm-hmm. to get controlled mm-hmm. because it can get out of control and it will kill your plant. Oh. It'll kill your Completely. plant. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. Um, almost any of the insecticides will control it. Good. Um, I like the oil sprays the oil just sprays. simply because it's a mm-hmm. again it's a, neem it's oil. A, it, mm-hmm. No, 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 no horticultural oil. Horticultural. I mean, neem oil will you know will mm-hmm. work as well. Okay. Um, where it, it, it's uh, like a paraffin oil. I like right. it. It's just because I know that it's going to kill work. it by coating it. Right. They're not like I said earlier. They're not going to be running away. Uh-huh. So That's again, mm-hmm. scale. Scale. Yeah. Look for Keep an eye on it. Look for yeah. any right. honeydew residue. Honeydew, yes. Look for ants that are feeding yeah. on that black. Yes. Look for uh, something you can scrape off. Sometimes uh-huh. they're you know mealy bugs. Like have you ever you know they if you know mealy bugs yeah, that mealy they kind bugs, of yeah. like mealy bugs look like a spot on a on a leaf. Yeah, like some they're kind of like that where they mm-hmm. they actually can be scraped off Don't. with your fingernail. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the scale can actually get big where, where it's almost like the body of a beetle, um, that without the head and it's just anchored into your, onto your plant. Mm -hmm. So easily controlled, but you need to know what to look for. There you go. Again, bring it to your local garden center. They will be able to give you the correct spray and the, the one that is safest for your family and your pets, but will be, be working to control the problem on your pants. So Wonderful. again, right. go to your local garden center, yes. go to bloomers. We mm-hmm. will be able to diagnose any of your insect problems, right. oh, but yes. you have to bring the plant where it's on the turn right. from good to, to bad. bad. Mm-hmm. There you All go. right. And yes. please don't bring a picture of, on yeah. your phone. <laughs> no, we okay. Won't. We can't yeah. see it. No, your phone's it. like, it's just, we're getting older. Right. Okay. Yes, we <laughs> like, can't you see it? No, I can't no. see it. Uh, <laughs> all right. And uh, okay. our next segment, we're going to talk about some dangerous insects Uh-oh. that are invaders look into out. our area. Oh, yeah. Big time. All right. Oh, boy. Dug out. We'll be right back. Flowers are beautiful things. Flowers are for anniversaries, proms, saying I love you. But flowers become even more beautiful when they're carried by people who are committed to ending Alzheimer's, a disease that currently cannot be prevented, cured, or even slowed. 
At the Alzheimer's Association Walk to End Alzheimer's, hundreds of thousands of people across the country walk carrying blue, yellow, orange, and purple flowers, signifying their connections to the disease. And we walk so that one day there will be a white flower for Alzheimer's first survivor, which will be the most beautiful day of all. So join us for Walk to End Alzheimer's, the world's largest fundraiser to fight the disease. The money we raise provides care and support for all those affected and advances research toward an eventual cure. Together, we can end Alzheimer's. Register today at alc.org walk. Tired of pale green, weedy results from four-step lawn programs? That's because they don't do anything for the soil. The New American Lawn four-step program feeds the lawn and the soil. MagiCal Plus, a unique soil food that adjusts soil pH, loosens hard soil, and feeds soil microbes is the key difference. Without the right soil conditions, you'll never enjoy a great lawn. Competitive programs simply don't match up. So feed your lawn and your soil with the new American Lawn 4-Step Program by Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green products can be found at these fine stores. Action Hardware, Wilmington, Delaware. Hokesson Hardware, Hokesson, Delaware. Gaspers Garden Center, Richboro, Pennsylvania. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. All right, we are back, Len. And this last group of uh, insects are really dangerous, aren't they? They are. They are. Um... We're going to be talking about three specific insects. One are ticks, mosquitoes, and the spotter and lanternfly. Uh, let's talk about ticks first. Um, have you ever had a tick on you? Yes. I you have. have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I have. How'd you get it out? Uh, with my little fingers. <laughs> yeah, you pulled it out? I caught, yeah, I caught it in time and um, <laughs> I was out riding my bicycle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. L listen to this description. Uh, okay. Those, uh, uh -huh. this, this will be rated what? R for violence, I oh think. Oh, my good. <laughs> uh, ticks feed on the blood of mammals and occasionally reptiles. They latch on to their host by cutting into the top layer of skin and Ooh. using a natural anticoagulant mm. to stop the bleeding. Ticks bury their head inside the wound and feed on the host. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> nasty. Nasty, nasty right. insects. But oh. they carry all these things in their saliva that... Yes. They transfer to their host. Um, again, it, it's, I mean, everybody knows now Lyme disease. Oh, and that what you want to do is be proactive mm -hmm. controlling oh, yeah. your home environment mm -hmm. by putting down something for ticks. And, and when we talk about an insect group, uh, insecticide group um, that will control mm -hmm. ticks, um, there's something that is, is common, and and I, I mentioned it earlier. It's another insecticide that was in one of the one of the ones that we spoke about earlier. And it's and it's lambda uh, solurethrin, where that is the latest and greatest um, insecticide to protect your family, to protect your pets, and it's in like like Bonide's four phase program, which we've talked about uh, a lot in the early spring. Uh, they are one of the only ones left that have an insecticide in their third step, right. which is timed really any time right now into probably the um, probably middle of August, August. That that will control ticks in the lawn or nice. and and where where it hits. Right. But ticks are mostly like for instance, I have uh, I have a dog. You don't have a dog. I know yeah. that, right? Yeah. You ever mm -hmm. have a dog? Yes. You did? Yeah, when did, I was younger. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What was the dog's name? <laughs> it was a poodle. I can't remember. You had a poodle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Girly dog. Yeah, I know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was a young kid. <laughs> all, right, all right. I'll, I'll let it go. Okay, uh, anyway. <laughs> um, like, so I've got a, a yellow lab, and, right. and we've got uh, 
my son has a couple of dogs. Right. And <laughs> what happens is that they get out, and when they're on the lawn, they're fine. But it's when they oh. get close to the to the brush along the landscaping, yeah. that's where the ticks are hiding. That's right. And I've had ticks on me, like when I'm doing some some work, yeah. like if you're cutting, cutting grass. Uh, no, no, not cutting the grass. No, no. Um, Jake does that. Oh, okay. But when. <laughs> You know, I'm going and I'm cutting some shrubs with some oh. sh- some shears or, or right. doing something. Mm-hmm. Yep, something that's in the higher elevations, right. and that's when I'm yeah. getting uh-huh. the tick. So you need to spray right. the perimeter of your property mm-hmm. and get that brush sure. and, or your landscape and spray those landscape plants Critical. because that will control the ticks that are there. It, it, Yes, they mm-hmm. they are in the lawn and they can appear mm-hmm. in the lawn, but mostly in those perimeter, perimeter areas. Area? Yep, where that? it's it's more brush that you'll oh, find wow. a lot of ticks. I know that has been in my case. Okay, and again, wow. it's Lambda Salutrin that that's the that's the product that mm-hmm. you want to look for as an active ingredient. Mm-hmm. Very very good, lasts mm-hmm. for a long time. Right. Um, excellent excellent product. There you go. Excellent product. Okay, mm-hmm. next group. Mosquitoes. Oh, mosquitoes. Terrible. <laughs> this year we have had so much rain. Tons. Ton, th- we had more rain in one weekend than oh. we're supposed to have for the entire month, month? of June. Wow. W- any place there is standing water, mm-hmm. you can't have standing water. We don't want, you know, yeah. it, it, it is essential that you get out there and you you get uh, anything tipped over, turn it upside down, get that water out of there because what you're doing is you're putting a haven and it could be a small amount of right. water. Real tiny. And kind of all of a sudden you've got boom. Yep. Mosquitoes are growing. Mosquito larvae is growing all in it. Um, if you have like a pond that doesn't have any fish in it or you have a pool that isn't, um, right. that you're just not using, anything with it. you, mm-hmm. you want to use something that's a mosquito beater. beater. Uh, it's a wettable powder. Um, there's also pouches. mosquito dunks. There, there's things. And what oh, they yeah. are is that they just are, are pouches that dissolve and release um, a... Uh, a, a larvicide which will kill the uh, juveniles before they come adults. Oh, good. And it stays it stays around. It doesn't like disappear. So so anybody who's got any standing water issues that they're dealing with, just grab a grab, yeah, some, grab of some of those and just drop them in. Them in mm-hmm. And it is organic. It is a yep. safe way to control those uh, yeah. those mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. But going back to mosquitoes, like mosquitoes are, oh, you know, <laughs> I mean there are. Issues with mosquitoes, yes. West Nile virus, oh. Zika virus. Zika. I mean, they are spread through mosquitoes. Oh. Um, uh, just their tube mouth parts uh-huh. pierce your skin. You and what happens is the mosquito basically spits back into your oh, back into your arm. And, and then all <laughs> oh, of a boy. sudden now you've got yeah. an issue. Did you notice, Len, though, that the female mosquitoes are the ones that bite? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's It's ironic. It is, isn't it? (laughs) I don't want to appear sexist, but we'll leave that one alone. Yes, we will. (laughs) Um, Again, it, it... with all of the rain that we had, you need oh, to really tons. do something to control to control mosquitoes in your neighborhood. Yeah. I know that uh, the the um, areas in, in towns and such are concerned are that they? they're going to have a problem. Yeah, so right. I was watering my plants the other day. I got bit like three or four times. See, you need to, to do something. Know, um, there are mosquito beater mm-hmm. sprays, which go. which will work. Mm-hmm. And again, it's that same um, insect uh, insecticide, insecticide that controls ticks mm-hmm. will control wow. mosquitoes. So you're actually killing two, two birds things. with one spray. Wow. So you're going to control Great. your mosquitoes and your ticks by using that same product. Wow. That, yeah. That's big. Mm-hmm. That's big. Our final thing, which we're going to talk about, uh, and we are running out of time, is a yes. spotter and lanternfly. Mm-hmm. Wow. We are ground zero for spotter and lanternfly. There is now a... Uh, actual quarantine in most of the New Jersey states and uh-huh. in Pennsylvania. Sure. Uh, this is something that is an invasion. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, they're little. They almost look like little black little spiders. Little spiders. And that they are going to grow into these things that actually they look yeah. kind of pretty. But what happens is they come in mass. Oh. Um, I Tons. mean, you will have like Tons. your patio furniture covered, mm-hmm. covered in these things these insects and the honeydew that they they go and put out that they oh. will cover it in black, black. soot yeah, so you terrible. basically will be sitting in their poop 
<laughs> we wow. need to take care of this right now. Yes. Spotter and lanternfly. Um, again, it, it, it's not as popular, but it is the most effective is going to be the imidacloprid drenches in your landscape plants. It is your best option. Some of the fruit tree sprays will work, but it is time that the, they're hatching um, and they, they're now developing into larger insects. So you'll start seeing adults probably mid-July. We have to do something about it. Yes. It is it is a major problem. Um, something needs to be taken care of right away. Mm -hmm. So again, that's the spotter and lantern fly. Mm -hmm. Please take some time to look it up and yes. that, uh, get to know. It's critical that we do that. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. This, this is, is a big next, one. This is a big one. This is a big one. Yeah. Actually, and, and the Delaware Valley is oh, being yes. just invaded. Crops, everything, you know, you it's name it. It's a bad mm -hmm. thing. Plants everywhere. Yep. In yep. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. All right. Well, join us next week. We've mm -hmm. got a, uh, we're going to be talking about daylilies. It's Ooh. daylily days. I love it. Yeah. yeah that All wonderful. Right. Right. We'll see you next uh, week. And we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.